Hello friends, welcome to Insights Icon Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about weekly current affairs week number 14. This is the 14th video regarding the weekly current issues. In case if you miss out the previous versions of the current current affairs regarding the weekly issues, you can find in the playlist under the weekly current issues. By the way, in today's video, we are going to discuss about following these seven topics such as questioning in parliament, which is related to polity, East China Sea, IR, Rasti Google Mission, Government Initiatives, Chiangyang Space Station, SNT, Global Declaration for River Dolphin Environment, UN, UN Day 2023, Miscellaneous and International Organizations, Double Taxation Avoidance Agreement, DTA, which is related to economy. Now let us see these seven topics in detail. Now first topic, the first topic is regarding the this questioning in parliament, it is related to Maho Maitra. There are allegations that she took some money and uh, after taking that money, she asked the questions which she was requested for. This is popularly known as, you know, like uh, uh, money for query or, you know, like, or, you know, and she was being summoned by the parliament ethical committee as well regarding that. Now we are going to discuss about this. This is popularly known as cash for query or money for query, whichever the way. But she still, she was been accused for that. She been not, you know, like uh, uh, completely convicted regarding this particular allegation. Now, let us see the MP, Trinamool Congress actually she belongs to. She was questioned by CBI as well as the Lok Sabha Ethics Committee. Both these organizations, they questioned her whether this crime was been committed or not. Regarding question in parliament, first we will see the procedure, how the questions will be asked in parliament. Asking questions will be regulated by Rule 32 to 54 of Rule of Procedure and Conduct of the Business in Lok Sabha as well as Directions 10 to 18 of the Directions by the Speaker of Lok Sabha. Under these, a member can ask the question. Next, to ask the question, obviously, member has to give first notice to the Lok Sabha Secretary General. If you know, please put the name of the Lok Sabha Secretary General in the comment section. Because Lok Sabha Secretary General as well as the Rajya Sabha Secretary General alternatively they will act as a returning officers to president election. So the notice, the member, whatever the member gives the notice, the notice consists of the purpose of the question and to which minister the question is being referred and this kind of all the relevant details will be there. And MPs can submit up to five notices of questions in a particular day and more than that, that will be forwarded to the subsequent days in the same session. And once the session is done, these notices will be lapsed. Okay? Categories of question, start question, unstart question, short notice question. This classification based on number of do days of notice required as well as the type of reply a member can get. Start question, generally the answer will be given orally and subsequent question, that means supplementary questions can be asked. Whereas unstart question, where Answer, written answer will be given, so supplementary questions cannot be asked because already member will get the written reply. Short notice question, this is generally on very urgent matters, member can ask the short notice question, answer will be given in an oral format. For this type of question, because if it is urgent in nature, notice period is generally less than 10 days. Question to private member, this will arise especially when there is a discussion is going on regarding the private member bill. You know that if a bill is introduced by other than minister, that is known as private member bill. And this question to private member, it has been governed by rule 48 of the Rajya Sabha as well as the rule 40 of the Lok Sabha. Now, as we are discussing that, this Mahiva Maitra been questioned by ethics committee as well as the CBI. Now we will see ethics committee, some relevant de details to the ethics committee. Ethics committee generally appointed by the speaker and the for every one year of periods. So, the tenure of the members is one year. We have to understand here, ethics committee first constituted in Rajya Sabha, then it was constituted in Lok Sabha. In Rajya Sabha, then vice president, you know that vice president act as Rajya Sabha chairman, then vice president K. R. Narayan constituted the ethics committee in 1997 to regulate the moral as well as the ethical conduct of the members. Later, in the case of Lok Sabha, study group was formed in 1997 to examine the performance of the ethics committee in Rajya Sabha and to adapt the same model in Lok Sabha. Finally, after a lot of deliberations, it came to realization in 2015. Before that, in 2010, when Lok Sabha speaker GMC Balayogi was there at that time, he constituted ad hoc ethics committee in 2000. Ad hoc means temporary. Later, 
it was constituted on permanent basis since 2015 and this ethics committee will regulate the members ethical behavior and here you have to understand ethics committee can in, can i mean it relevant only to the member of parliament unlike the privilege committee privilege committee not only deals with the members rights even it also it has the capacity to trial the non members of the parliament as well if anyone even violate the privilege of the parliament so this is the topic number 1 of today's video second topic ir it is regarding the east china sea japan given notice to google to rename whatever the islands japan claiming in the name of japan japanese names okay now so far they been uh, show, they shown in the names of china so japan is uh, order the google to rename them with japanese names japan asked the google to revert the map names of disputed east china sea by using japanese name so here yeah, the disputed area is east china sea Actually, this East China Sea and South China Sea, these are part of the China Sea. And the part of East China Sea between the mainland of China and the East China Sea is LOC. LOC is a part of East China, I mean China Sea, which is present between the mainland of China as well as the South Korea. East China Sea is a, it plays very important role because after the state of Malacca, when Indian Ocean connected to Pacific Ocean, East China Sea was the first one comes and here Ryukyu Islands this is one of the contested islands between the Japan as well as the China you know that in the South China Sea as well as the East China Sea especially in both the seas China is having lot of dispute with its neighboring nations regarding the East China Sea it is the arm of the Western Pacific Ocean obviously Western Pacific Ocean and actually Western Pacific Ocean it plays very important role in the you know like so El Nino formation El Nino okay and it is situated between the eastern coast of China, east coast of China, as well as the southwest coast of Japan, including the Ryukyu Islands. Here we mapped the Ryukyu Islands. Near to this, here you can you can see the Senkaku Islands and Daewoo Islands. Senkaku Islands and Daewoo Islands, these are the contested islands between the India, I mean sorry, China and Japan. Borders of this East China Sea, Korean Peninsula, China, Japan, and Taiwan. East China Sea and South China Sea together they known as China Sea like I said earlier this China Sea connects with Japan okay this East China Sea it connects to Japan the, the part of the Japan it is through Strait of Tsushima and it connects to South China Sea through Taiwan Strait already we have seen yellow sea mapping and rivers which flow to South East China Sea they are the yellow river Yangtze river you know that along the Yangtze river, Yangtze civilization was very popular. Islands in the East China Sea are Ryukyu Islands which are part of Japan and Daewoo Islands also known as Senkaku Islands by Japan. This especially Daewoo Islands, these are the contested islands between the China and Japan. The third topic of today's video is Rastri Gokul Mission RGM. Why we are discussing recently one cow variety included under this mission so that it that variety also will enjoy certain safeguards, certain intent, I mean incentives, certain research and development also on that particular cow variety. We will see which cow variety was added. If you remember students, in DPSP, one article is recommending that government has to encourage the scientific, scientific methods of agriculture and animal husbandry. What is that article? Put your answer in the comment section. So now, which cow variety we included? Gir indigenous cow. You know that Gir forest very popular for Gujarat. So we can easily say that this Gir indigenous cow are related to Gujarat. They now they are going to be promoted under Rasti Google mission. Now, first let us go through about this particular mission. It has been implemented under the development. It, it has been implemented for the development and conservation of indigenous bovine breeds since 2014. Whatever the indigenous breeds are there regarding the cow and buffalo they are going to be encouraged under this particular mission and it will be continued under Rastri Pashudan Vikas Yojana which launched in 2021 and is going to be continued till 2026. What is the objective? The major objective is about the enhancing the productivity, use of the genetic merit bills, uh, bulls, so we will propagate and artificial insemination and indigenous cattle and buffalo rearing will be protected and their conservation also will be so promoted in a scientific and holistic manner so these are the objectives of this particular mission 
Now about this gear cow, it is an excellent dairy cow breed in terms of the milk producer. And it is present mainly in the areas of gear forest and it has the ability to adapt in the entire central as well as the north and south part of India. So it has a greater adaption capacity. By encouraging this variety, we can enhance the you know like uh, its milk production and its population across the country as well. And one more thing you have to know that friends, by using this method as Rasti Gokul mission, through this even you can encourage the overall milk production so that per capita milk production also can be increased. The fourth topic is regarding the Tiangyang Space Station. Tiangyang Space Station is related to China and it is present in the LEO, low earth orbit. It is exclusively the China's space station and China is the third nation after USSR and USA to send humans into space and now it, they are going to have a separate space station as well. They are not being a part of ISS, International Space Station because they have some issues with America and America was having some certain kind of reservations regarding Chinese presence in this International Space Station because that space connect, the space agency's connection with the People's Liberation Army of China. China recently they launched Xianzhu 17 spacecraft. It is going to carry youngest ever crew to the Tiangyang Space Station. It is like a launching vehicle. Which one? Xianzhu 17. And space station name is Tiangyang Space Station. This space station is constructed by China National Space Administration and it is the first space station built by China. It is present in low earth orbit and is expected to be operation by 2028. Even India is also having aspirations to have our own space station. It is significantly smaller as well as a lighter compared to the international space station. How can we say? We can say when we make comparison regarding the modules. The international space station it consists of around 16 modules whereas the Chinese one is having only three modules. This Chinese space station it can accommodate three astronauts at, at a single time for six months of stay. Like I said China is going to be the third country to launch astronauts into the space and they are going to be the first individual country to have their own space station. You know that even Russia also they pulled out of the they, they announced that they are having the plans of pulling out from the International Space Station. Why does China have its own space station? It is having some issues with US. USA is having concerns over Chinese space program links with the People's Liberation Army. In 2011, US Congress prohibited the NASA from cooperating in any way with the Chinese counterpart. This particular law is known as Wolf Amendment. Because of that, China been isolated. Now they are constructing their own space station. That is the idea behind their own space station. Next one is global declaration for river dolphins. This is the declaration by countries which are having the river dolphins. You know that river dolphin can be used as a indicator for aquatic health. If a particular river aquatic health is very good, then we can see the certain visible presence of the river dolphin. And the gangetic river dolphin, which is mainly seen in India, it is also announced as aquatic animal of India. And tell me students, what is the scientific name of the gangetic dolphin? Put your answer in the comment section. So in a groundbreaking development, around 11 Asian and South American countries, they signed a declaration. The declaration is about the global declaration for river dolphins. Recently, actually across the globe, seven river dolphins were there. The seventh one recently, the Chinese river dolphin, it was declared as extinct. It is not available, unfortunately. Now we are having only six varieties. So at least now we have to put some effort to conserve those things. So now how many river dolphins across the globe? Six river dolphin species. Regarding the global declaration for river dolphins, how many countries are there? 14 countries are there. And uh, always remember, we are talking about the fresh water dolphins. Fresh water dolphins. To, to, aim, to reduce their decline in numbers, and to promote the conserve, these 14 countries, India and India's neighbors such as Nepal, Pakistan, Bangladesh also members in this to improve. And of course, what they are going to discuss to conserve the river dolphins. How can they conserve the river dolphins? By improving the, in their habitat. That means, wherever these dolphins are present, 
that uh, these nations try to improve the habitat of the dolphins like namami gange project in india river dolphins these are aquatic animals and they are somewhat related to whales but they are present in fresh water aquatic animals river means obviously fresh water chinese river dolphins recently declared as extinct these river dolphins present mainly in the rivers of the south central asia china and south america they are very popularly present in rivers such as amazon indus river ganges iravadi tikuski yangtze river all these six species at the moment they have been classified as either endangered or critically endangered out of the river aquatic dolphins the largest one is the amazon river dolphin like i said earlier it is the important indicator of the health of the river in india river dolphins are present mainly in the indus river ganges river iravadi dolphins at this moment these three dolphins we can observe in india at various places iravadi dolphin mainly present in which part of india please put your answer in comment section next united nations recently we observed un day on october 24th that is the reason we included this topic un day every year 24th october we observe as a un observation day because on that day in 1945 un wo was un wo un wo was established un wo stands for united nation organization actually un wo main purpose is to establish the peace and to avert another world war before the un wo one predecessor was there that was a league of nation it was established after world war 1 but it was unable to stop the another world war we witnessed the world war 2 so unwo celebrated annually on october 24th the founding day of the united nations un day is observed every year to commemorate the establishment of united nations in 1945 this year we mark marks the 78th anniversary of the unwo and 2023 theme is the front lines of climate action it underscores the global focus on addressing the climate climate change the front line of climate action so unwo role in combating the climate change established unwo established on 24th october 1945 following the conclusion of world war 2 the founding treaty the agreement behind the establishment of unwo is un charter of 1945 it is a foundational treaty of the unwo predecessor before unwo was there at that time league of nations used to be there the league of nation was established by woodrow wilson the interesting thing is even though woodrow wilson was man behind the establishment of league of nations america was never a member of the league of nations that you have to understand now at the moment unwo 193 member countries are there and the recent entrant entrant into the unwo was south sudan in 2011 two observer countries are there vatican city and palestinian liberation organization recently palestine israel war in the recent context this is very important palestine is not having membership in the unwo members so regarding the joining of new members it will be decided by the general assembly upon the recommendation of the un security council whenever this uh, palestine is trying to get membership especially america is using their veto in un security council so un security council is unable to send the recommendation to un general assembly regarding the membership to palestine headquarters of unwo present in new york usa these are the six important organs of the unwo out of this the trusteeship council now it is defunct it is not working now we are having only five active unwo organizations out of this international court of justice headquarter present in the hague netherlands rest of the four headquarters present in new york only these are some of the funds and programs running by the unwo like unicef unfpa undp unep unep headquarters present in nairobi kenya and world food program and un habitats these are some of the funds and programs operated by unwo our seventh topic is double taxation avoidance agreement first you have to understand students double taxation avoidance what does it mean it helps to tax payer that he no need to pay tax in two countries for example a person from switzerland doing trade with india if there is a agreement between india and switzerland in terms of double taxation avoidance then either he can pay tax in switzerland or india this is known as a double taxation avoidance agreement now supreme court is observed that government of india so supreme court is saying that the government can enforce can enforce the double taxation avoidance only only when they enforce the section 90 of the income tax that means 
section 90 of the income tax is facilitating the double taxation avoidance agreement between the nations unless until that double taxation avoidance agreement will not be enforceable that means when double taxation avoidance is not there means the person has to pay both tax in both their country as well as india so in terms of government revenues the revenue will increase but if this agreement is already there between india and other countries if is not going to be effective then those countries and india trade relations are going to be affected they are mainly switzerland netherlands and france because companies from those countries they have to pay tax in those countries as well as india it is going to impact the trade relation with that particular country of course this double taxation avoidance agreement were been misused previously they used to round trip the money to uh, you know like push this black money to into the market and uh, convert into legitimate money so why this why this particular judgment came this ruling revolves around the interpretation of the most favored nation actually this most most favored nation class give i mean gen, by default this 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 privilege will be given to every country unless until we revoke most favored nation state stat, status from any particular country you know that after the pulwama attack we revoked the most favored nation given to the pakistan we revoked that in this context of most favored nation while interpreting that supreme court observed this particular thing that this section 90 of the income tax has to be invoked then only double taxation avoidance agreement will be applicable so these are the seven topics of today's video now let us see the mcqs with reference to the india middle east europe corridor consider the following statement out of these two statements which one is right regarding the india middle east europe corridor now the answer is c both one and two both the statements are right let's see mcqs of today's video consider the following statement regarding the tribal cooperative marketing development federation trifed regarding trifed which two statements are right second question adakkal cave recently seen in news located in which state consider the following statement regarding the paint brush swift butterfly regarding that which which mcq is right sara ajivaka mela recently seen in news it is an initiative of saras ajivaka mela initiative from which ministry which one of the cities is located on the banks of the musi river okay very uh, easy to answer so these are the mcqs of today's video and so before summing up today's video in today's weekly current issues week number 17 we discussed all these seven topic students and this is the detailed analysis regarding the weekly current issues thank you